thank you for your participation. Uh, this is Sister Deborah Mayotte Moore. Her subject matter is going to be uh, pineal gland and melatonin and its relation to us, people of color. Uh, she's Wayne State University, uh, BS in computer science. Um, she's also a mathematics instructor. And uh, she's also a very awesome sister. Uh, who has done her research extremely well uh, on the pineal gland and melatonin, in addition to serotonin. I'd like to say give her a hand and welcome her here to the um, cultural conversation. Thank you very much for the warm welcome. I haven't been here in Atlanta in about 10 to 12 years, so it feels very good to be here in your lovely city with the beautiful and get a whole lot of it. it feels very good. As the sister Ma said, um, I'm going to discuss melanin, but I have to discuss that in order because that's the way of my art is to do things in order. So first, I must go in the order of a discussion of the pineal gland or the pineal eye, then the hormone that it produces, melatonin, and lastly, the substance called melanin. And I have, first of all, in yellow, the enabler under the word pineal gland. And gland basically is an organ of the body that produces very, very important substances. But I nicknamed the pineal gland or the pineal eye the enabler because it enables us to do a number of very, very critical, critical things. When we look at the function of the pineal gland, First of all, I have here that it's written as an inner eye. And by that I mean it doesn't see images like our two eyes, but it senses light and darkness. And as a result of sensing light and darkness, it helps us to go into another state. And I'll go into that in detail a little later on. The second one of its functions is that it functions as a clock a biological clock. That means that it keeps track of time and it tells us what time it is, what time to do this, what time to do that, and et cetera. This is where most of the research is being done today on the function of the pineal eye or the pineal gland as a clock. The next thing it functions as is a pacemaker. It sets the pace for anything in the body that depends on time or speeds. It's like a brother or sister that is the head of a relay race, that is the head of a four-team relay race or sprinters, that one person is set up in front to set the pace. And this is what the eye does or the biological clock does. It sets the pace for all activities in the body that depend on time. The next critical thing that it is is it's a compass. It actually gives us our direction. It helps us to orientate ourselves to our environment and to the environment of the world. And it's a secretory organ, meaning that it puts out or it secretes two hormones, one hormone during the day and the other hormone during the evening hours, melatonin. Melatonin, let's take a look at this one hormone. This hormone that's produced by the pineal eye is put out at night, really now, for the most part. It starts being produced in the human blood system in the nighttime. And this is why I call it the nighttime hormone. But I'm just going to give a brief introduction of melatonin and get into this in a little detail later on. And the hormone that is produced during the daylight hours, starting at dawn, is a hormone called serotonin or serotonin. So as you can see, these hormones have got to have an inverse relationship with each other. One produced during the day and the other produced at night. So nine times out of ten, they have directly or inversely opposite functions to each other. Now, I have over here an eye symbol in the ancient Egyptian 
hieroglyph language or of medu nature, an eye that they call the widget eye or the wadat eye. This was one of their terms for the pineal eye. Another term for the pineal eye is the uraeus. And I'm sure most of you have seen pictures of the Egyptian pharaohs with the little cobra at the top of the mast. That cobra was the symbol of protection. That was the symbolic pineal eye. So they called it the widget eye or the sound eye. Okay. And Uraeus meaning the snake or the cobra. And they also called it the eye of Heru. Heru at that time being comparable to Jesus the Christ. That was the son of God. So these are the different terms that the ancient Egyptians had for this eye that is the inner eye and of late they have found that it's also a biological clock. It sets the pace. It helps us to orientate ourselves, to find our directions, and it also secretes the two hormones. Now, what types of people study the pineal eye, the inner eye? Let's take a look at the types of people that do research on this very important organ because this is very important for us today. I think us as African people, we're realizing that we have to get more into the sciences. Not as though we weren't into that before, but because there's so much technology today, we're realizing that most of us that have children, we have to encourage our children and even us as adults to go into fields like biology, psychology, neurology. So one, and I probably should have left these uh, letters up here. One person that deals with the pineal eye or that studies the pineal gland is the endocrinologist. And this is because on a medical level, the pineal eye is an endocrine gland because it secretes the hormone. The other people that do research on this very heavily are the molecular biologists. And these people are uh, having a lot of controversy today in terms of the DNA that they experiment with and uh, the substances that relate to the DNA. So the molecular biologists study the DNA, the genes that relate to the pineal gland or the pineal eye. Then we have the neurologist. These are the people that study the human brain and its functions. Also psychiatrists and psychologists. Psychiatrists and psychologists also because of the study of the biological clock portion of the pineal gland, they have a new title or a new group of people today that are called chronobiologists. These are people that study time because that gland is so much connected to rhythm and to timing, it has branched a new group of researchers called chronobiologists. And the new field is chronobiology, which is the study of time. <coughs> so these are some of the people that deal with the pineal eye today and study it today. But thousands of years ago, the ancient Egyptian priests, who were the college professors, studied 